Welcome back everybody, Mudford here. Doing a little bit of work on the F-350 today. I know I have a bad axle U-joint right there on this side, on the driver's side. We're going to check for any other parts we might need. I'll do all the work at once, hopefully. Lots of brake pad left on both sides. Rotors look, look excellent, so that's a good sign. I did buy this truck from a construction company, and they were really good on maintenance, as I've been able to find out. They wanted their trucks to look good and run good, so they kept the maintenance up on them really good. Looks like all I'm going to have to spend money on is the U-joint right, right back here. So we have to take this rotor, all the brakes off the hub off first so let's get going on that I just want you to keep in mind as we're going through this that I've never done a front end never had one of these apart but just want to show you that it's not something to be afraid of you can do it it's fairly straightforward so I believe this holds the hub on I'm gonna go ahead and try popping it out ouch without pinching my fingers So, hub just simply slides out. Just pulling the brake caliper off now. Just these small bolts here. I think it's, what size do I have here? 17 millimeter. Okay, we're not really clamping it down a ton. We're just trying to get the pads to free up. My clamp isn't quite big enough here, unfortunately, and it's broken. Hopefully we can make something happen. Maybe. Okay, the brake pad. Here's the brake pads. You can see they're, they've got a lot of meat left on them and they're worn pretty even, which is really good. That's what you want to see. And the rotor still looks pretty good too. Now we have to take the bracket off next. Now it's especially important when you're taking these brackets off, they can be pretty tight. Don't take the first bolt all the way off because then when you're trying to turn this, it might spin the whole bracket. So break both, break both of the bolts loose before you take them all the way out. yours might be a pain in the butt to get off of here. You may have to heat around here with a torch, depending, and tap it. Try not to destroy it. What I'm doing now, oh, I'm not sure how this is going to work. What I'm doing now is taking this, I'm taking this bolt out to give me some slack in the uh, wire for the ABS sensor. I'm going to go ahead and put the bolt back in so I don't lose it. Why I'm doing this is I think this sensor here might pull out of there and just be the inductor part of it. And it might, I'm assuming it's two piece, that's why it bolts down and then there's just a ring on the wheel bearing part. But I was having a little trouble getting this out so I didn't want to mess with it and strip it all out. So my plan is now 
is just to take the wheel bearing off and I'm not doing anything with the wheel bearing it seems to be good I'm just gonna set it down off to the side and hopefully I'll have enough cord now with that loosened up that I can feed some cord through and let it set on the ground out of the way and I just pulled the snap ring off here on the axle shaft can't wait to get that last one to come off I just got a couple of washers here there are little washers and I'm not even sure what's going on here this is a lot different from the Dodge front axle that I pulled apart it doesn't have a hub it doesn't have the Dodge doesn't have a locking hub it just has a nut threaded with a nut there's four studs that are in here they go through the knuckle and then there's a nut on the back side and I've just recently sprayed some PB blaster on them hopefully they come out I'm, what I'm not sure of is how good it's going to separate I know in the past on other vehicles with the unit bearing like this I've had trouble getting them to separate from the knuckle and it's just a pain and I've ended up destroying these uh, dust guards for the brake rotors so hopefully if this comes apart alright we'll see how it goes a 13 16 on the back side on that knot it started out pretty hard but just with a half inch drive ratchet I was able to get it loose comfortable ratchet in your hand like this Mac one is really good this has to be one of my favorite ratchets just for the uh, comfort of the grip on it when you're putting a lot of torque on something okay we're setting pretty good now all four of the nuts came off quite easily which surprised me all the bolts are out of this, so we just got to get it to come loose. Wow, came right loose. Was not expecting that. So we're just going to go ahead and set it right out of the way. I just set it right down on the ground. The cable, the wire is long enough for that, so it should be okay. Just got a couple more washers here, spacers, so there's some kind of a seal, and this axle needs to come out this way, and of course it's hitting the seal, so I'm not sure what we got to do there, we'll have to look into that, I'm sure I don't want to destroy it. Okay, cleaned up all the rust around here with the emery cloth, sprayed a bunch of PB blaster in there. I'm going to try driving this thing out from the back side now. There's a seal assembly right here that needs to come off. It's kind of a pain in the butt. I'm going to try to drive it out from the back here. Push it out. Okay, I wasn't very careful with this, unfortunately. This here is the back side towards the U-joint. This is out towards the front. You can see it hub. And I damaged it when I took it out. You can see it's a little kitty wampus. So now I'm going to have to try to find one of these. But, the good news is, left is ready to come out. Once you get the seal out, it's just going to pop out. I'm going to show you how bad this is. Can you hear the noise and see the... That's a lot of movement. There's no needle bearings in there. If you haven't done this style of 
screw joint before the axle shaft style with the inner clips. You gotta dig around with the screwdriver, dig all the dirt out, and find the retaining clip. Then you're gonna get back here with the screwdriver and push this way and hit it with a hammer until it pops loose. Might come out in pieces, might not, but you get it gotta get all the pieces out before the next step. You can see I've already got this one out and that one out. So I just gotta get whoops. Just got to get these two out, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just takes a couple of hits like that, and you can see the clip has started out. And you just pop it out the rest of the way. There's any number of ways you can drive your joints out to replace them. A vise, like I am. You can use a press. You can use sockets, like half-inch drive sockets and a hammer. I've just about got this one loose. It is kind of rusted up. All I'm doing is holding it like this and the vise needs to be loose. And then this cap should be loose now. It's driven all the way out. I just need to get some pliers. There's a lot of rust in there. The needle bearings are rusted pretty bad so I'm going to go ahead and do that see if I can get it to break loose. One note is if you have any kind of seals or metal dust pieces or anything around here, you're going to want to try to get them off it before you do it because they can get damaged very easily um, when you're doing the U-joints. Okay, let's have a look in here. Not very good. Just solid rust. There's no grease, nothing. So these are would just continue to wear down until the needle bearings disintegrated. And now we're just going to flip it over. Sometimes this is pretty hard to do by yourself. A second set of hands can help. This side was much better, it still had some grease in it. That one was even worse than the first one. And there we have it. Bad U joint out. You can see three. Three of them were completely dry and rusted. One was eh, maybe okay. So we're going to take this with us to the parts store. That way we can get the proper U joint the first time. We don't have to worry about messing it up because we have the body size and the cap size. And we're also going to take that seal. And I'm really hoping we can find one of those in town. So here is the Moog U-joint that I got from AutoZone 2002 F350 7.3 turbo diesel $48.99 part number 374 there's two different seals that can go in there cheapest one is $40 more expensive one is $80 so make sure you're careful with that don't do what I did be real careful when you're taking it out drive it out from the inside Clean up both of your yolks, get all the dirt that you can out, anything loose, and I take a little bit of emery cloth and clean out just gently. You don't want to sand the metal down, but you just want to get it cleaned up some and get rid of any burrs around here so that the caps will slide in. Okay, I'm ready to get it started here. So find your greaser, it's right there. 
we want it facing the longer shaft. So I'm going to go ahead and start it through. This is why it's important you have it clean. You don't want to be getting a bunch of dirt in right now. Then I'm going to slip it right in there. And I'm just, for now, I'm just going to simply set it on the vise like this. And I'm just going to tap on the yoke a little bit. Until you get it in like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put get the other one started. Make sure you have a lot of grease in there. You don't want any of those needle bearings falling over now. If they fall over now, you're in a world of hurt. So I just started my cap on. It's just started on there. So I'm going to get my smaller hammer for this. Hey, it's in there tight and it moves freely so I know I haven't dropped any needle bearings. If you drop a, a needle bearing and you try to put it tight like this, it'll bind. This moves freely. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a so I'm gonna go ahead and get a C-clip started in this groove right now. When you snap your C-clip in when you got some space here, you need to make sure that the ends of it aren't overlapping where the little lip is on here. Otherwise it won't go on right. And here is going to push this up in and snug it up against the clip here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. You can see it pop right out. I we'll need to give this one a tap down. You're going to want to do some tapping, make sure you get your C-clips both in the groove all the way around. And then you might notice it binding a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't turn quite free. You can give it a couple taps and try it in different little positions in there and see if it gets better or if it gets worse. And kind of move it around a little bit and see. Try to find the spot, this feels really good now. Try to find the spot where it feels the freest and leave it there. And then now we're ready to do our other side. Okay, now is the part where you're gonna wanna have an assistant. Turn it this way. Get it on. Hold it, hold that up, just like that. about as far as you can get it through. It's important, important to get the U-joint as far as you can sticking through because then it's easier to get the cap on with the needle bearings intact. If you're trying to reach down too far with it, it's easy for one of them to pop out and get jammed in there and ruin the new U-joint. So we're just going to give it a couple real delicate taps like that. Flip it over, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to flip it over and go ahead now and put a C clip in this side while we have it exposed right there. Where was I? Oh, right here. Make sure you have your safety squints on. that one in place. I'm going to flip it up here. Give it a couple more little gentle taps. Let's see if we can get this. I think we got it in far enough we can get a the other C clip in. 
Okay, we've got the C-clip in. We're just going to use the screwdriver to make sure it's seated all the way. Okay, it's binding a little bit in this direction, so what we're going to do, we're going to put some tension on it this way. This is a quite a bit trial and error. Okay, it's binding this way, sorry. This way is fine. So we need to turn it this way. Okay, I like that a lot. It's not binding either direction. Feels good. Ready to put the shaft back in.